Casseroles were huge in the 50s, and turkey tetrazzini was one that my grandmother made many, many times. So this is kind of her recipe taken up to a whole nother notch and made very, um, very today. And it starts with just a box, a 16 ounce box of spaghetti. We all got that laying around the house, El Cheapo. But this actually, this recipe is so good that it'd be dinner party worthy. I promise you it would. So we're gonna start with, we've got, the recipe calls for a stick of butter. We're gonna take half of that. You could certainly lighten this up and do a little bit of olive oil. So this is just my, you know, classic, rendition of it, but you can certainly uh, just use this recipe and make your own. By the way, a reminder, book club is tomorrow night, so if you called up to reserve your spot, I want to see you there. We're headed to the bottle room in Suamico. Uh, book club meeting's at 5.30, and it's going to be great fun. I think we're about at the limit, so if you missed out on this one, shame on you. No, just kidding. We'll see you at the next one. I also have a, a big cooking demo coming up in Appleton. Not this Saturday, but Saturday the 20th at St. Peter Lutheran Church. So I hope to see you out there. It's going to be great fun. You can um, just see some of the new fall recipes I'm working on, and you'll even get to try them. So it should be a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm dicing up my celery. The recipe starts with some diced onion, which I'm going to get that going, finely diced. I love to make a, a nice big more kind of elegant casserole like this. And yeah, I do consider some casseroles company worthy, and this is one of them. Um, when company's coming from out of town, I love to get a nice casserole like this, um, done out of the way and in the refrigerator, all ready to bake. Uh, and that way, I don't have to, you know, I want to see them, I want to hang out with them, I don't have to be stuck in the kitchen the whole time. So then you can just toss a big salad together, some bread, pick up or make a great dessert, and uh, call it a day. So that's why I love my casseroles, because everything's in there and you don't have to do a million different side dishes. I've talked about my grandmother, Mimi, who passed away a few years ago. She was such a great cook, and in the 50s and 60s, she was known for her dinner parties. She was, you know, like Martha before Martha was around. And one of the things that she did was she just made a few dishes. She didn't make, like, dozens of dishes. She just made a few, but they were really, really good. She focused on making them the best that they could be, and then she also wasn't stressed out, and she got things done ahead of time. So I, I kind of channel that, and when I'm starting to get stressed out about a get-together, and I know it's a busy week, I think, well, what would Mimi have done so that you can actually resort, uh, enjoy the, the get-together and be part of the party and have some fun? So onions, celery, and finely diced green pepper. If you don't like the green pepper, you can leave it out. Not a big deal. What else do we want to talk about? Packer's Wife Show is back starting Friday. I know a lot of you have been asking. Um, it is back and going to be better than ever. I'm cooking with Emily Nelson on Friday's show. She has some amazing recipes. She's a fantastic cook, Jordy Nelson, uh, Nelson's better half. And uh, she's going to show us what to do when you get to the end of the week and those bananas are not so gorgeous. She's going to show you what to do with them. So. I really hope that you'll watch on Friday. It's going to be a great show. She's got a killer banana sheet cake recipe with homemade cheesecake fro uh, che uh, cream cheese frosting that is, l let me tell you, out of this world. Okay, to, so to my onions, my celery, and my green pepper, I'm going to add eight ounces, half a pound of sliced mushrooms, and I'm going to cheat a little bit. Just bought the pre-sliced uh, mushrooms, keeping it easy. Seasoning that with some garlic salt and some pepper. And I'm just going to let that hang out for just a little bit. Did I season my, my water? Yep. Got to talking. I want, you know, it's real important when you're cooking pasta, like in this case, just some spaghetti, to season the water with a little bit of salt. If you don't season it then, you really won't have a chance to, you know, you won't be able to season those noodles down the road. Okay, just wanted to check on my pasta. Tomorrow on the show, we're going to get you all ready for the big Packers game on Sunday. Home opener, pretty exciting, against the Jets. It's an afternoon game, so plenty of time to put out a great game day spread. Or if you're tailgating, plenty of time to tailgate. So we've got some fun recipes. An all-new show, all new recipes and ideas. Our new season is back, and we're pretty excited about some of the fun ideas that we have planned. Okay. Now, one mushroom overboard. You get back in there. You're going in my casserole. Now, one of the things you'll notice about my casseroles is 
they call for a little more liquid than the traditional church, you know, cookbook casseroles that we all grew up with. Um, what I found is that some of the casseroles tend to, after you bake them, especially if they got right, rice, pasta, or potatoes, tend to um, really be a little dry when you take them out of the oven. I'm not a big fan of dry casseroles, so I have added some things to really make them nice and rich and creamy. So this recipe calls for two cups of sour cream. You could use light sour cream if you wanted to. It's completely up to you. Now that's going to keep this really creamy and velvety, this sauce. People have said that my tetrazzini is the best ever, and so, hey, that's what they said, not me, and I do happen to agree it's pretty lovely. Okay, now we're going to do two cans, not one, but two cans, and it's your choice, cream of chicken or cream of mushroom soup, or a combination of the two. It's totally up to you on which ones you're going to use. Oh, Ann's got it right there for me. I was looking for my little spatula to get the soup out of the can. And that sour cream, among some of the other ingredients that I'm going to add, um, is really going to cut. I love using canned soups, and I, I know some people give me a hard time for it in my casseroles, but you know what? Some of the top chefs are still using them to bind the casseroles together, but they're adding some great flavor. There's something about the creaminess, and also for busy, you know, at-home cooks like me, I'm not a chef, um, there's, it just makes it easy. You could certainly make your own cream soup bases. They're not all that hard to do. Uh, butter, flour, chicken base, maybe some leftover chicken and some milk. But, you yeah, know, I'm pretty busy, and uh, so are you guys out there. So that's why I love my cans of cream soup, and I normally have them in the pantry, so it makes it even easier. Okay, now here comes the liquid. We're going to do a little bit of dry sherry, not cream sherry, and we're going to add that in there, or dry white wine like a Chardonnay, and again, that's going to take away that canned soup taste, and then quite a bit of milk. We've got our lamer's milk here. We're going to do a few cups of milk. When we add our pasta, we can always add a little bit more if needed. But because we're doing a whole pound of spaghetti, remember that spaghetti is really going to soak up this liquid when it bakes. All right, now for the chicken. I have a secret way of doing chicken breast, and if you watch the show, you have my cookbooks, you know how I do my chicken breasts. And I like to just shred them up where they're nice and warm. And I do it by hand. That way you can kind of feel, nice clean hands, you can feel what's in there. Sometimes there's pieces of that chicken you don't want in your casserole, and that way you, with your fingers you can feel it. Or pick up a rotisserie chicken, that would be perfect in this recipe. When I'm roasting chicken, I like to roast extra and use it in a few different recipes for the week. And I'm using boneless, skinless breasts because that's what my family likes. But if you are, um, you know, have some dark meat around or you're doing a rotisserie chicken, just shred it all in here. Or turkey. I'm using chicken because that's normally what I have uh, around the holidays and Thanksgiving. I turn this into the turkey tetrazzini. So you can do tetrazzini with either chicken or turkey. And sometimes, actually, now that school's back in session, roast up a turkey breast or a full turkey. It's not just a Thanksgiving thing. It's inexpensive. What kid doesn't like or their house smells delicious on a Sunday if you roast a turkey and then turn the leftover turkey into all sorts of different recipes? Okay. My producer, Katie, who's filling in for my producer, Abby, who's at home on maternity leave, is saying, Amy, get this thing moving. So we're going to push this along. In goes our veggies that are sautéed, getting a little bit soft. They'll continue to cook up a little bit in the oven. I'm going to quickly drain my pasta. And you don't want to overcook the pasta. That's really key, is just cook it. I actually sometimes undercook it a little bit uh, because, again, I was going to say cook it al dente, but sometimes that is even a little bit more than you want. It's going to cook again with the sauce, and we don't want a mushy pasta. That is no fun at all. Great big casserole dish that you definitely want to spray with cooking spray. I am so excited about this. And then I top this casserole with a mixture of melted butter, 
Parmesan cheese and breadcrumbs. I'm a huge fan of the crunchies on top of a casserole, but for this one, I wanna keep it kind of classic and simple and, and very 50s. We're not gonna go too crazy on this one. Um, you know, that's what my grandmother topped it with, just some breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese, and I, I added the butter, I do admit. Um, but spray that casserole dish, cover it, park it in your fridge until, you know, maybe even up to two days before uh, you need to bake it. Then bake covered with foil, I don't put the topping on until right before baking. So if I'm making this ahead to refrigerate, I'm gonna hold on putting together the Parmesan and the breadcrumbs. Um, but then bake, if you're taking it out of the fridge, remember that all casseroles take a little longer to bake, ice cold out of the fridge, so it's gonna take about an hour. Uh, uncover the last 15, 20 minutes of baking. All right, let me show you this gorgeous beauty. The breadcrumbs are getting nice and toasted. The casserole is bubbly, nice salad and bread, and let me tell you, um, that's why I love the 50s. Great stuff came out of there for sure. Recipes on the website. You can also pick up this recipe uh, at any area of festival foods. Coming up, Boston cream pie, three bean salad, and some healthy snacks. One of Anne's favorite healthy snacks. She's lost almost 40 pounds. We're going to tell you her go-to healthy snack. Stay with us.